Hey everyone, the name is Eric Tor and today we'll be talking about your Big 5 personality test result. What does the Big 5 mean? What does it say about you? And how can you understand it to better your life and to understand yourself better? So there are five scales of the Big Five. And first you want to know the Big Five is focused on what is the most observable in human behavior. What can we test and measure statistically? What can we back up with science? Is a real behavioral trait something people actually do? Something people that we can test and measure and understand about people and their differences and their personality. So the Big Five is about what you do. And it's about five things you do. It's about outgoingness and how outgoing you are if you're ready to take action to do things to put yourself out there to live life to be around other people and to be in a situation where you can be judged or looked down on and laughed at or ridiculed in any way so the big five is about outgoingness and it's also about openness openness is your ability to have new experiences try new things do new things see new people learn new skills Go to new places that you haven't been before, to challenge your mind, to try things where you don't know the outcome. Agreeableness, that's your ability to do the right thing in different situations, to work with others, to help other people out, to support other people when they need it, and to be there for other people, and to do your part and to try to do your best in life. Finally, conscientiousness is about your ability to control a situation, to deal with a problem if it comes up to take care, to take responsibility of something, to make sure it happens right, to make sure you're on time, to make sure you stick to the rules, that you take control of something, and that you take responsibility for how it happens. Finally, the last scale, neuroticism, is about how comfortable you are in your current situation. How comfortable are you with yourself, with being where you are right now? Are you anxious? Are you ashamed of something? Are you afraid of something? Are you upset with something? How prone are you to doubt and to uncertainty and to feeling bad about yourself? All these scales are about your behavior. And you know, your behavior is cemented by mindset. Mindset is just as important as behavior. All of these dichotomies are fueled by mindset. How do you want to see yourself? How do you see the world? What do you think about the world and about other people? It's about what you think about the world and about other people. So outgoingness is built up by mindset. If you want to be more outgoing, you have to have a certain mental frame. You have to generally trust yourself. You generally have to have a strong opinion of yourself. And you generally have to have strong beliefs and opinions and values. You have to feel that what you have to say is important. You have to trust in yourself and that it is good to speak out. You have to trust in that you know the right answer. A person that trusts that they know the right answer is more likely to go out and to share with the world and to say, hey, this is the right answer. A person that doubts themselves and second guesses themselves or wonders or fears if that other people will quit, criticize them or question them is likely to be more reserved. Reservedness is the opposite end of outgoingness. The less outgoing you are, the more reserved you are. The more cautious you are, the more careful you are. You wait before you do something. You get evidence before you do something. You make sure you know everything before you do something. The outgoing person knows something already and does something. The reserved person doesn't know and waits until they know and then they do something. That's generally how it works. The open-minded person is optimistic. The open-minded person believes a situation is going to work for the best. The optimistic person believes new adventure is going to reward them, it's going to be fun, a new party, it sounds great, meet new people, sounds interesting, a new chance to learn, a new skill, a new test, a new subject. Sure, I'll dig in. I'll try it out. That sounds interesting. An optimistic person assumes it will be worthwhile and that will give something. A pessimistic person is more unsure. Will that really give me something? What if that's not fun at all? What if it turns out to be terrible? What if the people are rude? What if they're not good? What if I can't like, what if I don't like them? Generally, an open-minded person has a level of hope or optimism about a situation. And the more open-minded you are, I mean, the more optimistic you are, the more you learn. The more fun you have in a situation, the more you remember. The more enthusiastic you are about something, 
the more you take away from the situation. A pessimistic person is closed in the sense that they prefer not to learn or to get experiences if they don't think it's going to work out or if it's not going to be good. No relationships if they don't think it will lead somewhere. No new friendships if they think the people are going to be rude. New new activities if it's not going to lead anywhere. So that's important to remember. Pessimism and op optimism are on opposite ends. The pessimist is focused on avoiding a negative outcome, being disappointed. The optimist is focused on attaining a positive state, having fun, or having a new activity, or learning something. So that fuels openness or it fuels close-mindedness. Agreeableness is fueled by the mindset of good-naturedness. People are good. I can trust people. People are generally truthful. If you believe that, if you believe people have your best interests at heart, that the system is out there to protect you, that you can trust the state and the government and the nature, that you can trust the people around you, you're more likely to follow the rules. If you don't trust the system or the government or the people around you, you're more likely to lie, cheat or steal. And you're more likely to protect yourself from other people, to protect yourself from potentially bad situations, to avoid outcomes that will put you behind, to make sure that even if other people lie or cheat or steal, you'll still remain ahead. So that's the goal, to avoid being cheated or lied or stolen from, to avoid being deceived, deceived or manipulated by other people. Finally, conscientiousness is fueled by confidence. What do people who procrastinate and who are often late and who often mess up do? What do they have in common? Well, they're not confident in their abilities. Generally, they don't feel confident in their ability to do something or to take responsibility for something. They're careful to take on new positions at work. They're careful to take on positions of responsibility. They're careful to not take on too much on their shoulders. They're afraid they won't be able to handle it. They tend to avoid responsibility and they tend to avoid anything that requires them to have to work or put in effort because they often lack the confidence to believe they can do it well. So confidence is basically about how empowered you feel, how powerful you feel, how, you f how in control you feel of a situation. A generally, a less conscientious person feels less in control of their life. They are less sure of what's going to happen. They don't know what's going to happen next. They don't know if they will be able, what, be able to take care of a situation. They don't know if they'll be able to manage a position of responsibility. So they won't take it on. Now, as I said, neuroticism was about how comfortable you are with yourself and with your personal situation and with where you are right now. So what you want to look at is who would you be if your neuroticism was at zero? Where would you be? What would you do? What kind of a person would you be? What kind of behavior would you engage in? After what we'll find is everyone has a big five profile that matches up to who they are at 0% neuroticism. And that's your comfort zone. That is the kind of behavior you engage in when you are the most comfortable with yourself and with your situation. So a person with 0% neuroticism might sometimes be outgoing or sometimes reserved or sometimes open-minded, or sometimes more narrow-minded, or sometimes more agreeable, or sometimes more disagreeable, or finally sometimes more conscientious, or sometimes more sloppy or lazy. So that all depends on basically where you, or what you do when you are in a position of comfort and calm. Generally, perhaps you'll find you're the most calm when you're in control of a situation and of other people, or maybe you'll find that you're the most calm when you have as little responsibility as possible and when you let other people take care of the situation. Perhaps you'll find that you're the most calm when you're around people or you'll find that you're the most neurotic when you're all by yourself and when you have nobody around or when you're sitting still and doing nothing. So knowing this, find out your comfort zone. Adjust your scores and think about yourself in different situations. Think about yourself being alone. Think about yourself being out there, putting yourself on the spot, on stage of other people. Think about yourself when you're doing something new or traveling or having new experiences. And think about yourself when you're doing something you usually do, and when you're engaging in a routine or doing something you always do. Think about yourself when you are engaged with other people who share your values or interests or when you are in a situation where 
you rely on the government or your co-workers or your boss for something or compare it to a situation where you're taking care of yourself and you're focusing on your own interests and your own needs first where are you what would your scores look like i'm asking you this because if you know you'll always know what to do to restore comfort and to reduce neuroticism you'll always know what to do to calm yourself down If you find yourself becoming anxious, you'll find yourself perhaps learning to take a step back. Or you'll find yourself calling a friend and asking for advice or help in a situation. If you find yourself becoming or feeling ashamed of yourself or feeling judged, perhaps you'll find yourself um, uh, taking on a new position of responsibility or helping a friend. Or perhaps you'll be taking a step back from other people and focusing on yourself for a bit. So that all depends on who you are when comfortable. And that's basically something that is almost hardwired, almost hardwired in yourself. It's softwired. It's like a softwired comfort zone. The comfort zone is softwired in your brain. It's like uh, your normal capacity, (laughs) your normal flow in the brain, your normal usual state of mind. And uh, in this mind, your brain is basically functioning at normal capacity, not higher, not low. It's just like, yeah, you're just doing what you usually do (laughs) or you're just doing something that you normally do. When you know this, you know how to adequately challenge yourself. Because you might find that you don't want to be like this. I don't want to always be in my comfort zone. I don't always want to hide away from other people. I don't always want to put myself in a situation where I'm always comfortable. Sometimes I want to challenge myself. Sometimes I want to push myself. Sometimes I want to have new experiences, even if it makes me uncomfortable. So you want to develop yourself. And when you develop yourself, it's important to set adequate challenges for yourself. Focus on your current level. What would be a step up for me? What could I do to grow myself from where I am right now? What could I do to become more open-minded? What could I do to become more outgoing? What could I do to become more agreeable? What could I do to become more confident? Find ways to challenge yourself and don't just focus on your mindset. A lot of people say, focus on your mindset. Just say say you're going to do it. Just trick yourself into being confident and you'll be confident. But it's equally important to look for evidence for the fact that you're being confident and for the fact that you're doing something good. You'll want to get evidence and to get evidence you have to set adequate goals and you have to meet these adequate goals. You'll have to do something that you think you can reasonably push yourself to do and you'll have to do it and you'll have to get the evidence that you were able to do it and you'll have to let yourself feel good about that. That's very important to let yourself reflect on the positive things you do and on the positive experiences you had. If you want to become more agreeable You'll have to find people around you that you can trust. And you'll have to find evidence for the fact that you can trust them. And for the fact that they are doing good things. You'll have to look at and remind yourself of good things they've done for you. And you'll have to remind yourself of good things you've done for them. And times it rewarded you to do something good for others. This is how you develop your big five. And this is how you develop yourself using the big five. The big five can offer a lot of room for personal growth and personal development if you focus on mindset. And if you focus on your comfort zone, and if you look at your results, and if you look at who you are in a comfortable position, and then if you look at where you ideally want to go, what would you the most want to be? What situation? What would you do? How would you like to be? Ideally, it's the best to move towards outgoingness, open-mindedness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness, and low neuroticism. But... Only when the environment supports it. Only when your situation allows you to be that way. That's very important. You have to form an environment that can allow you to be at your best. You have to find friends that allow you to be at your best. You have to have experiences that will reward you. You have to do things that will actually give you something. It's equally important to think and to have good thoughts and to have a good situation, a good environment that will reinforce your thoughts and your beliefs. Now, if you keep putting yourself out there and people keep rejecting you, it can be actually be a good thing to take a step back. If you look at yourself and you realize that you're putting yourself in the wrong situations, if you're going out and meeting the wrong people and doing the wrong things, then it's good to take a step back and to think about what you would like to do. What would you ideally see yourself doing if you did what you enjoyed? What hobbies do you have? What is your passion? What are you the most passionate about doing? What do you like to do the most? A lot of people will find themselves doing the wrong things, doing things that don't make them happy, that don't give them fulfillment. 
a lot of people will find themselves going into situations that are against their personal interests and their personal needs to serve and to live up to the expectations of other people. So then it's important to take a step back and think about what you would like to do. What makes you happy? Personal growth should be about happiness. Personal growth should be about fulfillment, satisfaction of needs, your needs, being somebody you're proud of, being somebody brave, being somebody that is satisfied with their life and who they are, being somebody that is at peace with themselves and who they are. That's the goal, happiness. Now, a lot of people miss this when developing themselves. They screw over their own happiness. They put themselves in situations they hate. They push themselves to do something great just to get admiration from other people, just to get love from other people. Not because they actually enjoy it, not because they actually would like to do it. They might actually want to be painters, but they're pushing themselves to be businessmen. They might actually want to be musicians, but they find themselves pushing themselves to be accountants. Accountants. <laughs> Basically, a lot of us are setting traps for ourselves and our future happiness by putting ourselves in the wrong situations. And what you do, you're going to get the wrong feedback. You're going to be putting yourself in these situations and you're going to feel anxious and dissatisfied. You're never going to feel happy with what you get. You're never going to feel truly proud of yourself for what you do. And then you have to take a step back and you have to think, how do I reclaim my happiness? How do I reclaim my life? How do I live and shape myself and grow myself while respecting myself, while trusting myself, while trusting my needs, respecting my needs, respecting who I am, going for what I love and doing what I'm passionate about. The goal of personal growth is happiness. Don't forget that. Find out your big five personality type. Te take the tests online. Look at your scores. Look at who you are when your neuroticism at is at its lowest. Find your comfort zone. Find your mindsets. Find your how you think. Rewire your script, reprogram your script, challenge yourself adequately, find your core interests and passions and find appropriate outlets for outgoingness, for openness, for agreeableness and for conscientiousness. That is how you grow yourself. That's how you understand yourself. I hope this video helped you and I hope you can use it to better yourself and to have a gooder time, a better time. And if you like this message, feel free to support me on my Patreon, patreon.com slash ericthor. And as always, I hope to see you all in my next video. So see you all later.